Back on the wrinkle, I have at NCHC Media Day. I, I guess you could say we saved the best for last, or at least the <laughs> defending national champions for last. Uh, David Carl, head coach of the Denver Pioneers. Uh, how much fun is this to kind of get it cranked up again? Here we go. Yeah, it's great. Um, excited to get back on the ice playing games here in a couple weeks. And um, camp's been going well so far and a lot of new faces, but i um, excited for the, the challenge that, that will be this season. Uh, just asked this uh, earlier, but uh, you, did, did you have a favorite uh, thing that you guys did? You guys were honored in so many different places. Rockies uh, game, Avs <laughs> game. It seems like you were the you were the toast of town for yeah. a little while. Yeah, no, the uh, the Avs game was cool. They actually had us down on the ice um, to drop the puck, so that was pretty cool in a sold out building. And you know, normally that's not the case, but the NHL schedule was still pushed back because of the COVID late start, and so. We don't, I would say, normally it doesn't align to go to an NHL game. And so that was a really fun night for the guys um, to be able to do that, go down on the ice with the trophy and, and be in front of, you know, the hockey fans. And, and then for Colorado to, to finish it off two and a half months later uh, with their cup run and um, bring both trophies to the city was, was an incredible thing for our community. Mm -hmm. Um, I just, you know, you talk about the new faces, just, uh, you know, how, how much kind of a rebuilding do you have to do and how much of, of a base do you start with, do you think? Yeah, it's a great question. Um, obviously, the, the whatever it is, 15, 16, 17 new guys give us a really good foundation or returning guys. Returning sorry. guys, yep. Um, give us a great foundation, especially in goal and on the back end. And, you know, the hope is as you uh, draw up the the perfect plan is that uh, <laughs> as the season always goes um, is that you know that group of six to eight people on the back end um, will provide some stability and a real good foundation for the for the forward group where there's seven new people out of 15 um, to kind of find their legs and find their way and in, in how we play and um, you know as we as coaches figure out who plays best with who and that's going to take some time to figure out kind of where the puzzle pieces all fit together and um, so it's it, again it's going to be a really unique and different challenge than, than what it was a year ago and um, something that we are looking forward to as a staff and, and as a program and our players. Uh, you know when you guys uh, you, you make it to the frozen face off uh, you, you lose in the semifinals. Uh, to reboot at, at that point and to do what you guys did, uh, what were some key things, I guess, in that that time from we lost that game until uh, you know the NCAA tournament that you guys focused on? Yeah, I think it was um, it was just a bit of a shot in the arm to I think narrow our focus and um, the things that we needed to do on a consistent basis shift and shift out to have success. It's not like we played poorly mm -hmm. against Duluth in the game, but we also didn't do enough um, consistently to win the hockey game. And um, so it was a it was a really good week of practice the week leading into Lowell. Um, I think the guys were, were motivated just to um, use that loss to kind of, again, narrow our focus. And um, in 17, we lost the same game and um, went on and, and won the championship and kind of used it in a similar in a similar fashion. So um, again, it's you want to win you want to win trophies, but um, to be honest, you know that that tournament is a real good dress rehearsal for the NCAA tournament. Is kind of how we use it, and um, we try and use it as a tool to try and prepare ourselves for the one that we really want. You, uh, you had a tough game with Lowell. You had a game against Minnesota Duluth where, you know, maybe you got a little puck luck to get that, <laughs> that, that winner and get you to the Frozen Four. You go to overtime with Michigan. You go into the final 20 minutes of the season, you're down a goal to maybe the best goalie in college hockey last year. What do you say at that point, or, or do you feel like you're right where you want to be at that point? Yeah, I mean, we were, um, certainly all of our games were, were really tight and, and closely contested games. And I think having those games, you know, helped us in the Mankato game, understanding that we're only down by one goal. Um, I think, you know, we, we hadn't played our best, obviously, the first two periods, thought the last 10 minutes of that second. We had started to pressure some pucks and create some turnovers, but we our puck support was poor, our offensive execution was poor, and um, we got a bit of a, an ugly goal in the third period to spark us, and I think that kind of lifted our bench a little bit, and then we made two really high-end plays to, to get two and three in the net, and Magnus made a big save, I think, at two or three, one, um, you know, right down the slot, and, and at that point, I think it was, we felt really good about it. Um, but, you know, again, you, you never think it's over until until that buzzer goes, but um, it, was a, it was a really fun ride and something we're proud of, but 
um, something we can now enjoy and look back upon and, and certainly have the hunger and the desire to, to try and do it again because it, it's addictive, as everyone knows. Uh, was, was it a hard sell to get Magnus to come back, or was he excited uh, to no, jump back into it? Or? No, it was really just honest conversations about what opportunities were, were there for him at the, at the pro level, I think, um, and what opportunities would be here for him when he, when he came back. It wasn't a hard sell. It was just um, this is what it is, and um, he took you know, a methodical approach to it, a real honest approach, and um, you know, obviously we're happy he came back, but we would have been thrilled for him had he chosen to sign as well. And um, he'll have that opportunity hopefully at the end of this year after another year of, of improving um, his overall consistency and, and his play and maturity and things of that nature. Um, and hopefully leading our team to another uh, very successful season. I wrote about this on the rink live a little bit. Uh, a, a tragic loss for your program in the offseason. Mm -hmm. My friend and your friend David Tomasoni, who was a, a pioneer on, uh, on defense in the 70s under Murray Armstrong, had a battle with ALS, and, and we said goodbye to him. But before that happened, your team took a big step and honored him uh, at, at a practice uh, before a game against Duluth. You know, just uh, I, I want to say thank you as a friend of his and a friend of your program. Uh, just an incredible thing for, for Denver hockey to do. Yeah, thanks. Um, yeah, David's a, you know, obviously has had a huge impact on on the program, but also in the in the Duluth community and the in the state of Minnesota and his role. And yeah, to be able to have him, um, you know, come to our practice, we honored him with a jersey, um, and he spoke to the team. Uh, he ultimately then dropped the puck with that jersey on yep. in Amsoil. Um, and I don't think the fans quite knew how to take it, um, <laughs> but they did win the hockey game. So, um, um, but it was it was a great moment I think for for him and and his two sons and his granddaughter and um, you know and his son sent a, a framed photo of him talking to the team and um, a profane quote at the, at the bottom of it um, that win the blank thing he yeah, said. That, yeah. yeah, that reminded us that we, when we got to the championship game to win it. And um, after we beat Michigan, we actually brought the, the frame photo with us, uh, hung it in our meal room, and it actually now sits in our video room with some other um, memorabilia from past championships as well. So a really great story and obviously really sad to see him go. And, um, you know, his family is, is obviously in our thoughts and prayers. And um, we honored him also at our, at our golf tournament this year. Um, made a donation on his behalf to uh, um, to ALS, and um, want to obviously continue to support him and his family in the fight um, that that is. David Carl, head coach of the defending national champion Denver Pioneers, uh, that, that crown kind of sit heavy on your head now, or are you you're looking forward to it? It's 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 been taken off. Or no one's got a crown on this year yet, so we're we're working on the next one. Sounds great. Well, thanks for joining us, and we wish you best of luck. Right. Always fun covering the Pioneers. Thank you. Appreciate right. it. That's Mick Hatton. I'm Jess Myers from NCHC Media Day on the Rink Live. Thanks, Mick.